In this video, we define the concept of colligative properties and see a few examples of what colligative properties are. All right, so in the last few videos, we have been working really hard to derive uh, how the chemical potential of components in a mixture change when you change the concentration, and that's uh, this full list that we have right here. So it's time now to try to see some applications of that really hard theoretical work that we have been doing. Uh, so what we do now is, is try to learn about colligative properties. Uh, those are uh, a, a, a set of phenomena in which you're, you have a solvent, a majority component, now you're going to be adding a solute, and what you ask is, well, how does the addition of the solute change the properties of the solvent? Okay, so uh, the name colligative properties, what, what it really means is that it really doesn't matter uh, the type of solute that you add, for these properties, the only thing that matters is how much of that solute you add. Okay, so again, if you're thinking about maybe the solvent being water, and the solute being either glucose or or maybe ethanol, two very different uh, substances. Right, the properties of uh, for a colligative property, uh, the property will not depend on whether you're adding the ethanol or glucose, only uh, on the concentration. Right, so how much of those solids you're adding. We've already seen uh, one example of a colligative property, which is uh, the vapor pressure lowering. That's actually what Raoult's law really is, right? So let's see how. In Raoult's law, what you're examining is how the vapor pressure of a solvent changes when you add something to it, right? And this is the expression. Right? It's a colligative property uh, for a couple of reasons. First, if this is a binary mixture, that is that you can recast that uh, x sub a simply as 1 minus x sub b, where x sub b is the concentration, the mole fraction of the solute that you're adding to the solvent. Right, so notice that what happens here is that the vapor pressure of the solvent changes when you add something to it. Right, notice that the vapor pressure, if you add nothing to it, when pure, is simply this value. But if you add something to it, if this x sub b is uh, uh, larger than zero, then the vapor pressure of that solvent lowers. Okay, so again, Raoult's law is kind of the first example of a colligative property. Notice also that it really does not depend on what you're adding. That, this only depends on the concentration, not on, on what type of solid you're adding. Okay, so that's great. There are other types of colligative properties that we're going to see. Uh, in this video, we're going to introduce uh, boiling point elevation and freezing point depression and then we'll uh, develop those a little bit more in the next video, and we will conclude with uh, perhaps solubility, and ideal solubility, and also osmotic pressure, which is kind of uh, a textbook uh, colligative property. But for now, let's focus on, focus on boiling point elevation and freezing point uh, depression. All right, so when we were looking at pure substances in the last unit, we were actually able to draw diagrams that look very much like this for the more Gibbs energy or chemical potential of a pure substance as a function of temperature. Right, so we have a pure substance, we said that there's going to be three phases in general. This is the gas phase, the line of the gas phase, and the slope is equal to the minus molar entropy. This will be the line of the liquid phase, and then this will be the line of the solid phase. And we use this type of diagrams to then learn how uh, the boiling points were and, and what they meant, right? So what we did here is say, well, notice that the phase of lowest moral Gibbs energy is going to be the most stable one. Right? So at high temperatures, what happens is the gas is a stable phase, and at lower temperatures, the solid is a stable phase, because those are the lines of lowest mm, uh, chemical potential or more Gibbs energies. At the intersection between two lines, you have the boiling point of the pure substance or the freezing point, depending on whether this is um, the liquid to gas line or the solid to line. Uh, line. Um, excuse me. <coughs> All right, so uh, now we're going to be adding a solute to this uh, pure solvent, right? And now uh, there's a couple of conditions that, that uh, have to happen in order for this to work. And that is that the solute has to be non-volatile, and uh, uh, that means that when you're boiling this solution, 
only vapor of the solvent goes into the gas phase, so the solute molecules do not go into the gas phase. And then uh, it also has to be a non-freezing solute. That means that when you freeze uh, that mixture, only the solvent freezes, the molecules of the solute stay in the solution. Right, so again, this, this is uh, fairly reasonable. Uh, what that means is that when you're doing an equilibrium vaporization of sugar water, right, when you're actually boiling, that vapor is pure water. You don't have any glucose uh, into the gas phase, which is true. And, and something similar should happen from equilibrium freezing. Okay, well, if that is the case, right, if this solute is non volatile and non freezing, what that happens is that when you mix uh, the, the solvent with the solute, then the lines of the gas and of the solid will not change because that's still the pure solvent. The only line that is going to change in this diagram is the line of the liquid because that's where you have the mixture of the solvent and the solute. Okay, so then what happens is that we have to figure out how this line changes, the line of the liquid changes, when you add a solute to it. Okay, so if you add a solute to it, then the idea is that uh, you're going to have either an ideal solution or an ideal dilute solution. Uh, but in both of those cases, what happens is that we're considering the solvent for this particular application. So in both of those cases, you have that Raoul's law place, uh, is at play. Right? So if Raoul's law is at play, then the expression for the chemical potential for that liquid is this one. Okay? And uh, uh, let's actually try to examine it a little bit. Right? So the chemical potential of your solvent, when you have a solute in it, will be the chemical potential of the liquid one here plus a correction that will be negative, right? It's negative because this number is less than one and that natural log then is negative. All right, so what we actually have here is the chemical potential of the liquid one here, right? So that is this, this line of, uh, uh, this line that you see right here is just the line of mu J star. And what that means is that when you add a little bit of solute to this, then because this is a negative correction, then uh, you'll have a line that is lower, has a lower chemical potential than the line of the pure liquid. Right, and that's something that we can draw relatively easily. Right? We can actually say that in reality what you're going to have is a line uh, that falls below the line of the pure liquid. Right, so that is the line of the liquid in the solution which is ideal. And again, uh, it has a lower value of the chemical potential because that correction then happens to be negative. All right, so notice that now you actually have a different boiling point and a different freezing point. All right, so the boiling point is right here. That is your new boiling point, which I'm gonna call TV prime. And your freezing point is out here. That is a freezing point that I'm going to call prime. All right, so uh, this happens for every solvent and uh, every solute, as long as it's non-volatile and non-freezing, right? There's always going to be a boiling point elevation and a freezing point depression. That's, that's uh, uh, what we learn from here. Now, in the next video, what we're going to see is exactly how to calculate quantitatively, uh, exactly by how much the, uh, freezing, uh, the boiling point gets elevated, and exactly by how much the freezing point gets depressed. Okay, so uh, again, uh, the way that we're going to do that is simply by uh, uh, appealing to our knowledge of thermodynamics to find, yes, a relationship between the change in the boiling point and the properties of the solution, right? And it's especially the concentration, the change in the freezing point as a function of the concentration of uh, that solution.